On September 19th, the House Education Subcommittee on K-12 is going to be holding a hearing about the role of foreign funding in K-12 institutions, which to us is a very important issue because it's something that most American families have no idea is taking place. Um, as we know, he who pays the piper calls the tune. And a recent Parents Defending Education investigation found that there were many, many districts around the country that have been taking money from the People's Republic of China over the past several years. Um, and we believe that fa families deserve to know what is taking place, where the money is coming from, what the curriculum is, so that they can make a decision whether they want their children to participate in these programs or not. We are not saying that these programs shouldn't exist. We are not saying that children shouldn't learn Mandarin or Chinese culture, but rather that families should know and be able to um, decide whether they want their child to participate in a program that might have a teacher that has come from China, that is a member of the Communist Party, and that is teaching true history. Do they want to know about the three T's, Tiananmen, Tibet, and Taiwan, or do they want a more sanitized version of Chinese history? Some parents are okay with that, and some families are not. Parents Defending Education's research into foreign funding in K-12 institutions actually started in March of this year, when we identified that the Thomas Jefferson High School for Science and Technology had received over a million dollars from CCP military-linked entities. This piqued our curiosity, and we filed a public records request to figure out the extent of this and what took place. What did these entities receive for the amount of money that they sent over? The initial quote that we were given by Fairfax County Public Schools was over $35,000, which we found astonishing. We scaled it back slightly and ended up paying slightly over $13,000 for documents. We are still receiving the documents. We'll receive the rest of them around Thanksgiving. But from the ones we have received so far, we have identified that what these entities received in exchange for their donations were tours of the school, um, lesson plans, meetings with teachers. Um, and so essentially what it looks like happened is that all of these teachers, all of these party officials came over, took the lesson plans, and then went back to China and created what are called Thomas schools by one of the donors, which is essentially ripping off the model of this elite STEM school in America. Interestingly, now we're seeing Thomas Jefferson mired in equity fights, and it has dropped in the rankings domestically. And so Thomas Jefferson is now not only not able to compete against other schools of its caliber in America, but certainly not against its counterparts internationally, which is a travesty. So Fairfax County Public Schools and the statement they have put out seem to indicate that in their mind, this is merely just a cultural exchange program. Um, that might be their take on things. They released in response to an, uh, an, a request by the Virginia Education Secretary, Amy Gadera, um, actually indicated that, yeah, this is this is really nothing more than just sending teachers and, and staff back and forth. Um, in our mind, this is far more serious than this, because again, we have both foreign nationals basically ripping off an education model that American companies, American students, American um, you know education system has poured millions of dollars into, but also um, that what are these students actually learning at the end of the day? We don't know what our children are learning or frankly are not learning. And parents deserve to be empowered. They should know and have access to that material so they can determine whether this is a program that they want their children to participate in. Um, we had identified 143 districts across the country that had received CCP funding um, for over a period of years. Um, some of those programs have been shut down. Some of those programs are still in existence. Uh, Tulsa Public Schools, for example, is one that still has one in existence. Um, but a number of these programs were set up in districts around military bases, which I think raises a different set of national security concerns. Um, what access, what material do the teachers have access to? What student data do these teachers have access to? And what is being communicated back to the mainland? We believe that there should be greater transparency over this. Um, several years ago, we saw Secretary DeVos and Secretary Pompeo take steps to rein in the Confucius Institutes at the higher education level, which they were able to do because the Higher Education Act mandates transparency of foreign funding of gifts over $250,000. Unfortunately, there is no such corollary for, transpar for, tra for transparency at the K-12 level. And so we think that is a very obvious and should be a very bipartisan first step. That being said, $250,000 is a very high threshold. And through the course of our investigation, we found that many of the gifts were well below that amount. And so I think the first step is just knowing where the money is coming from so that people can make decisions about whether this is something that they want their school district to be participating in or not. This is not an anti-Asian hate movement. This is simply a matter of following the money and determining what these 
districts are providing in exchange for what amount of money. There is curriculum, there are teachers, and then there is also data that is flowing back and forth. And that to us is something that's deeply concerning.